Hello, and thank you for your interest in Roll4 Initiative's Dice Tower products. In this video, we'll show you how to assemble and use our Castle Keep Dice Tower, Castle Keep Dice Tower with Dry Erase Turn Tracker, and our Castle Keep Dice Tower with Turn Tracker and DM Screen Castle Walls. First, let's take a look at the products and their retail packaging. Here is the Castle Keep Dice Tower. Here is the Castle Keep Dice Tower with Dry Erase Magnetic Turn Tracker. Here is the Turn Tracker sold separately. And here is the Castle Keep Dice Tower with DM screens and Dry Erase Magnetic Turn Tracker. Next, we'll take a look at what's inside the package. After taking all the pieces out of the box and laying them out on the table, you'll find Two pieces that make up the Castle Keep Tower. Two more pieces that make the upper battlements and top ramp. There is a wooden colored bottom ramp insert. You have two pieces that make the dice tower tray. And there are two separate castle wall DM screens with battlement inserts. Also, in a plastic bag, you'll find the dry erase magnetic turn tracker, which consists of one long magnet and ten dry erase magnetic nameplates, five red and five blue. And you'll find a small sheet of sticky squares, two-sided tape that can be used to help with the DM screen and dice tower assembly, and used to help attach the magnetic turn tracker long strip to any place you want on your dice tower or walls. First, we'll start off with the dice tray. When starting the assembly of each piece, it's very helpful to bend each one of the seams and the folds forward and back to release tension in the paper, and this will ensure that you get nice, square, sharp corners and that everything will slot in and attach together appropriately. When doing the assembly, it's helpful at times to have a couple of paper clips to act as an extra hand. Fold up the two end walls and hold in place temporarily with the paper clips. Then move to the side walls by wrapping the sides over the flaps from the end walls, and then tucking the tab into the slot at the bottom. When all four walls are in place, you can remove the paper clips, see if there's any adjustments needed to square it up. And then drop in the bottom insert. 
Next, we'll do the same thing with the dice tower battlements and top ramp. Once again, start off by folding all of the sides and the flaps backwards and forwards to break the tension in the paper. And just like the dice tray, start with the two sides that have the short flaps. Bend the sides over and click them into the slots and then hold them in place with the paper clips if necessary. Next, fold over the other two sides so they go over the side flaps. Next, we'll put in the top ramp and the top insert for the battlement. For this step, you want to make sure that the ramp is going perpendicular to the two downward tabs that extend down from the top of the battlements. Those two big top tabs will slip into the dice tower shaft later. Now we'll move on to the main dice tower shaft. Start off here by folding in all of the ramps and the ramp tabs and pop out the door and window cutouts. Here you want to fold the pieces back and forth kind of like an accordion. Do it first in one direction, and then flip it over and do it in the other direction. Try to be a little careful in some of the areas that are thin so that you ensure that the pieces bend where the creases are and not right down the middle of the piece. Then to assemble this part of the shaft, you simply roll it up into a box. And then tuck the large tab into the slot. And then reach inside and pull the ramp so that they click into their little ramp slots. And that is the bottom part of the tower shaft. Now we'll add the insert that goes above the bottom ramp. It is both a cosmetic piece as well as it helps deflect the dice towards the center of the opening and out the guardhouse gate. Now we'll slip the bottom part of the dice tower over the edge of the dice tray. It slots in just like that. Next, we'll move on to the top part of the dice tower. Just like before, you want to punch out all the doors and window openings and fold the ramps back and forth. 
and then do an accordion fold on each of the large panels. Do the fold in one direction and then flip it over and do it in the other direction. Then when you have all of the ramps bent in and the ramps slot tabs bent in, then you want to roll it up just like the first one. And now here you have two tabs to hold it together. Once that piece is squared up, it should slide right over the top of the bottom piece of the dice tower shaft. And now here we drop in the dice tower battlements by pushing the large tabs in between the two walls of the upper dice tower. And we want to set it so that the ramp is going to direct the dice towards the back of the dice tower. There's a total of four ramps. So the first one goes back towards the wall and the fourth one comes out the castle gate towards the camera. And now let's try it out with some dice. That was a package of 15 dice. As you see, the dice tray can easily hold about 25 or 30 dice. Now let's move on to the dry erase magnetic turn tracker. Remove it from the plastic bag. Some production runs of the product will have an adhesive strip already on the back of the long magnetic piece. Some of them will require the use of the little sticky squares that came with the sheet. You can put the long magnetic strip on either side of the dice tower. It's really up to your preference if you want to have the nameplates facing you if you're the game master or you want to have them facing the players or you can buy an additional turn tracker and have them on both sides. Next we'll punch out all 10 nameplates and we'll write some names down on them. This is a standard dry erase surface so any type of dry erase marker will work. Not only can you change the order of the nameplates as your turn order changes, you can also slide them left or right if you want to indicate various conditions, like if somebody deferred an action or if they're hasted, things like that. Next, we'll move on to the castle wall DM screens. So you start by folding the creases back and forth, just like before, to loosen up the tension. If you're going to attach the screens directly to the sides of the dice tower, you should get yourself a pair of scissors or a sharp knife. You may need to make one small cut on one of the tabs. and then fold in the top and bottom flaps and then the side panel and it closes up just like a box. If the top boardwalk flap is wide like shown here, 
you probably want to cut it in about half. That will provide the proper width so that you can tuck that into the doorway of the tower wall. Newer editions of the castle walls have this top boardwalk flap already cut to the proper size, and so you can skip these steps. You can also add one of the little sticky squares to help it hold better on the bottom. Finally, we'll add in the battlements on the top. Fold them back and forth once. And then just tuck them into the slots. Now repeat those actions for the second castle wall. Make sure that if you're going to cut the boardwalk flap that you cut the one on the opposite side since you're now attaching the opposite side of the catwalk to the other side of the tower. Just like before, add one or two sticky squares to the bottom portion of the side panel of the castle wall. And then tuck the top flap into the doorway of the castle tower. And that should hold it together. You can see here that you can use the castle walls for storage and organization of your game notes and maps and small books. And you can open up the little side panels for storing pens and pencils during the game to help you stay organized. And there you have it. Roll for Initiatives, Castle Keep Dice Tower with DM Castle Walls and Dry Erase Magnetic Turn Tracker. One last tip before we go. You can attach your game notes and maps and rules using the provided set of sticky squares. 
peel two or so off of the sheet and then attach them to your notes and then stick them onto the DM walls. Thanks for watching and happy gaming.